Well, Barry Burkus, we're going to talk to you about the art that you've collected in the, the Burkus collection here at the Atkinson Gallery. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to see and just maybe set the scene for us. You're going to see a diverse uh, group of works that represent everything from figurative to literally abstract, from 25-year-old work to current work, to work that I think shows the expression of an artist as a creative individual in society, that really talks about a vocabulary beyond the written, that lets us use our imagination to read beyond the canvas or the paper or the facade. So what we do as we go through the art, I think, is try to interpret in your own mind and mind what they're trying to say and what is the history of that piece, meaning does it reference another artist or does it reference a new thought? And those are things that are very important to me as I look at art. Okay, well, I know this, this first artist we're going to look at is, is a special favorite of yours. It is, and this is Nancy Graves, who uh, we helped um, 20 years ago, plus or minus, in uh, putting together a show that traveled nationally. And she spent time with us and stayed in, in Santa Barbara. Um, she's an artist who is very interested in organic form. And she's known for her sculpture more than her painting. But this painting happened to be one that I thought represented her thoughts that are in the sculpture as well as on a flat canvas. She started working with camel bones and a lot of archaeological pieces. And in this painting, you'll see that there is the form of skeletal shape from the camel paintings, as well as the organic forms that are here within the leaf shapes that are in the painting, plus a link that goes through the canvas that could very well talk about how life is tied together or how thoughts are tied together. And if you look at a painting that's as difficult as this, because this is not an over-the-couch, easy painting. It is not one that's literal. It is not one that really is of landscape, but it's one of landscape of thought and of how a mind begins to compose thoughts that are very fragmented and abstract. And as you see this painting, or as I see this painting, each time I look at it, I see a different thing. And that's why I love abstract art, because you can get lost in developing new thoughts of your own based on gestures made by an artist. And is it good? Is it bad? It's in the eyes of the beholder and the historians. None of us know whether contemporary art is going to live past the next century. It's something that proves itself with time. OK. Well, Nancy Graves, you just mentioned, is perhaps better known as, as a sculptor. And we have a piece by her also that we can look at right over here. Maybe you could juxtapose a little bit what you see in the painting versus what we actually get uh, in the, the sculpture right here. In the sculpture, Nancy Graves talks about organic shapes and found objects. And so that if you see it, she has cast everything from the pliers-like shapes to leaf-like shapes to pods and things that we in Santa Barbara found for her or with her as she climbed trees and tried to find things that she could cast in, uh, in New York when she went home. But this also happens to be the first patinaed piece with enamel on it that she did. So it's a fairly important piece in her history and as you look at it and walk around it, it becomes figurative, it becomes landscape, it becomes literal in many ways in that it becomes a drawing. And I think that we look for the drawing in almost everything that we see because that's the beginning of thought. And the gestures, the great drawings from Michelangelo, Da Vinci, and going back, really talk about how thoughts are formed. And this sculpture, in my mind, talks about the formation of organic shape as well as the thoughts that she had regarding found object. Mm -hmm. Now you say we look for everything, we look for the drawing and everything, and we're going to move over here to another piece where we are literally looking at a drawing. Tell us about this one. Well, this is Kiki Smith, and Kiki Smith was the daughter of a very famous sculptor, Tony Smith. And Kiki works in inks on uh, Nepal paper, which is here collaged and where she is doing almost self-portraits along with animal, that she seems to love nature. She'll do a lot of pieces without the figures that have to do with the birds and rabbits and friends of hers. But here, the reason I like this so much is the balance. The fact that the, the leg here balances the cantilever or the arm carrying the animal, and that there is a tremendous amount of strength in that shape, which almost becomes somewhat religious. But at the same time, you can look at her eyes, and she is intensely beyond the piece of paper. She's someplace way beyond whatever we're looking at. And so 
the thing that I do when I look at this piece is try to understand where she was coming from when she created it, and also how the piece was made. Because when we look at art, we look at the gesture, but we also look at the difficult way of making a composition speak to us. And in Kiki's point, and I taught a class or lectured to a class at Santa Barbara High School where I told the students that the negative space is as important as the positive. That by being able not to fill the whole paper, that you begin to really gesture and draw lines that create a focal point, a center of composition, and also allow you to stop painting and stop thinking and move away. And you look at the great buildings in Santa Barbara, like the courthouse, the negative wall space is as important as the puncture of windows, which are really an anomaly in that building, making up a pattern that doesn't have really historic precedence, but tells us that there's a personality behind the work that's very human. And that, to me, is very important in art, as well as architecture. Well, as I look at this piece, uh, we get close to it. The, the, the texture is obviously important because the, the paper is really interesting. Well, do you, can you talk about that? Well, the paper, as I said, was from Nepal. So it's handmade paper. And drawing on that type of paper is a very difficult art in trying to realize your gestures without having the paper throw you around. And you can see a lot of this is collage, which means that she's trying to build up an image, in my mind, that gives you the relief of the texture of the paper and the punctuation of line of her drawing. So that what you see is, is there things in this that become uh, upsetting in their form? And the head seems to be slightly larger than it should be. It draws your eye to something that she's trying to emphasize. And the eyes definitely are something that are almost haunting. But the texture of the paper itself is really juxtaposed by the line work and the negative space or the light and dark of composition. And Kiki Smith is, will have a retrospective this year, I think, that starts at the Whitney or on the East Coast and travels. She's a well-respected artist that uh, we've been following for a long time. And we asked of her and her gallery to offer to us a piece that she would put in a museum that would be important to her. And we think that. That's a very important way to look at art. How important is it to the artist? It's just not another piece of work. So this has a lot to do with the texture of the shadow, how she made it, the figure, the representation of how the figure is looking back at us. But I think it's a, a really good piece. Well, as we hear you talk about the paintings in your collection here, we hear you reference a lot of architectural terms. You're talking about structure. And as we move over to our next piece, I think we can see that that's also important. This piece is by an artist that Susan Rothenberg, who to me is one of the most important painters in the United States today. In this piece, you see a little bit of de Kooning, the artist, a little bit of Philip Guston, who was an early painter, who worked with the color palette as well as the gestures that you can see in Susan's painting. But in this painting, she represents herself as a figure in the center. So it's a self-portrait. She has a dog at her left side, a dog in her arm on the right side, and another dog on the right side on the lower. She's very, very tied to her animal world, living in Santa Fe um, with Bruce Nauman, who is a, a famous sculptor and artist. And this piece represents her horse, which she did. Her first art really was about the horse. And those paintings have stood very well in time. But this is the first time that I've seen her take her own personal life and put it into a canvas or a piece of paper like this, where she really used the abstract expressionist way of tying it together using the historic colors and palettes and gestures of Gustin and de Kooning and representing her whole, whole family of thought, which in this case is her animals herself. The thing that interested me too was the structure, the grid, and how that grid brought the painting together in a way where she looked at people like Sam Francis, Saul LeWitt, people that use the grid as possibly an underlying way to tie the composition together. So in my mind, this painting speaks to a lot of history, as well as an artist who I feel is one of the strongest artists in the United States living today. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's haunting. Uh, we've already seen some natural forms over in the work of Nancy Graves, and we're going to see that as we move over to the, the next piece also. 
This is Tara Donovan. Now this is a current artist. This is an artist that is working today and is working in forms that are very familiar to the younger artists that are producing abstract work today. And you can go in a lot of different directions with this piece. It's one that really is organic, as you stated. It may reference a little bit of what Louise Bourgeois was talking about in the bronze over there of the claw of the hand. It may be a piece that really works with the negative and the positive of the space. It's something that she blew bubbles of ink and transferred it to the work. So she's not necessarily working with a brush. She's really working with something beyond the technical tools that we know every day that a painter would use, which would be a palette knife and a brush or a pen. She was trying to do things that were somewhat accidental, I believe. And I think the composition either works or doesn't work as she completes it, because as you put something like a blown bubble down on paper, I'm not sure you know what it's going to do at the end of its work with you. So it's interesting to see, could she control that medium? And I'm going to be the first to say that a lot of the young artists that are working in vocabularies like this, I don't totally understand. I can tell you that as I look at it, it intrigues me. I want to know more about it. And hopefully in the future, as more of the artists begin to work with this type of form, I will become more educated. Mm -hmm. But it, it was a painting that interested me a lot because of composition and because of the way it was made. And we'll have to wait and see now for right. the rest. Well, this is a piece where chance plays a, an important role in, in what's on the, the, on the canvas. Uh, when we move back over here to the, our next piece, um, this is a very different uh, type of work right here. This is Luisa Rabia. She's Italian. She's young. She's in her 30s. Um, I was riding a bike through Italy, came into a small hill town on my bike, went to a museum that was having a show of, uh, I think it was Richard Tuttle. And in the side gallery were these drawings. And it was by an Italian artist. And I sat down and was mesmerized by a piece that was done by Luisa Rabia. It was a little drawing, about 12 by 12. And I sat down and sketched that drawing, and then went to the town and tried to find her uh, through galleries. Nobody knew her. So I came home back to California and ended up going through the web and finding her gallery in Florence. She's had 60 shows, and she's only 30 some odd years old. And they just couldn't help me. And then I called a New York gallery that represented her also, and uh, Massimo, and he's just a wild guy, and he said, well, maybe we can get that painting or that drawing. So he called the museum. It was on loan. He called the artist. And we ended up with this little 12 by 12 drawing that I'd sketched in Italy you know, months before. Then he called one day and he said, you know, the artist is here in Brooklyn uh, for a month making a show to go to Turin, Italy. And she'd like to meet you. So we got on a plane and flew back. And this piece was in her studio. Now, Luisa Rabia is all about showing the process of aging and moving through our skin about how we trans make transitions in life from young to old, how our thoughts change as we age, and how life can be there when it looks like the figure itself is still. And the figure, this is all blue pencil on a build-up composition of polymer over wire and glue. And every bit of this is hand-drawn with a blue pencil. She's amazing. And she's very young, and she's going to be heard of a lot. She shows in Spain, Italy, the United States, and only in her early 30s. But the emotion of a piece like this, is this a street person? Is it, is it homeless? Mm -hmm. Is it somebody from a Muslim or Arabic culture? I don't know. And I'm not sure she does either. Well, and as you say, there's a sense, too, that, that it's both old and young. As we look at the face, um, it seems to be an older person. But the, the pose, when I first walked in the gallery, I thought it was a child. Um, and there's, uh, there are leaves growing out of the, 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 the bottom of the pants there, too. That's interesting. I think those leaves represent life, ongoing life. When we first had this piece, we put it on a bench by Paul Tuttle, a Santa Barbara artist who's now deceased. And the lady that takes care of our house from time to time walked in and was frightened because she thought it was a child, just like you said. And what would it be doing bundled up in our entry on a bench? But this piece really takes you on a journey that can make you really try to understand what is happening to the human being right now. What is humanity all about?